Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, this is on the, uh, the vehicle for the Army. It's a 2019 Ford Ranger. Um, I ran at 16,000 miles, if I'm mistaken. Um, so, uh, you mean you're going to go get that yeah. today? Yeah. Uh, it'll be ready by 4 o'clock today, so, and then I think you have to sign some papers and stuff like that. Um, so, with the County Blazer, um, you guys want, I looked it up, the, 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 the worst thing about the County Blazer is the age. Uh, you can go from fair at nineteen hundred dollars to excellent at thirty three hundred if you're lucky. It's a good vehicle, uh, but it, I think we're at at eighty seven thousand miles. Two thousand three. We bought it in two thousand five. Um, it, we have a, another county vehicle in Ellsworth just like it. Same year. I mean, if you went out there and we parked them side by side, you couldn't pick Stafford County as much as you got lucky. Um, but I did have the, uh, this one gets hot, and it has for a number of years. Um, I took Ellsworth to Ellen Automotive, in great band. They ended up putting a new thermostat. There was some other pro problems. They put a new radiator in it, and he fixed that problem great. So whoever would buy this, or if you want to do a sealed bid, or if another department, I would recommend, I think, that to that blazer, uh, where it wouldn't cause problems for the next for the next people. Uh, it costs right at just under four hundred dollars. You want to cost tells you it's radiator, new radiator, uh, old chain. Well, they did some other things too. Just what I thought. Yeah. Uh, give me a thing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's good. Great. Uh, Work on that. Yeah. Oh, okay. What's the We're a little jingle. We do a little we jingle. Could. Like, what's, <laughs> what's the uh, so <laughs> so I don't know if a closed bid or you know you're talking that little dollar amount. It would be a good. I, I don't know if anybody would want it though. Any other department? Uh, I think all the other departments pretty much. Ryan got it already. Because that's the oldest so one, and that wouldn't help. Ryan. Shannon just got it. Do we so have any other departments to have? No. It's probably not big enough for a prisoner transport. No. In the winter time, no. not in the winter time. No. It'll run. It'll run like two twenty. Got it. And it should run like yeah, two. Yeah. Two. That's what he thought. All right. Uh, he had to go deeper yet. <laughs> but but it did fix it. What's the price on the new bed? Uh, Twenty nine thousand five hundred ninety five dollars. That's hopefully what this Would it be say. smart to just keep that thing? For what? I don't know. My experience with just keeping it because you might need it later in two or three years, you got something that's sick. worth nothing because so it hasn't been driven. Really. Mm -hmm. Marmies did one about trade. No. And you, they kind of recommended trade. I, I mean, I just did one. Sealed bed. Sealed bed. Okay. I'm sorry. Did you work a trade-in value on them? I mean, he recommended not. He recommended not because a lot of times it seems like you get more on a trade-in value than you ever do. I don't think they were going to. And I had to run them. They didn't mind. How many miles are we picking? I would think Lawrence, Jim, or somebody would do the rest of Yeah, yeah. And like I said, I think it's a, I mean, I would I would be afraid to drive it anywhere across country. These tires on it are great. We've still got to get nice for them. Can't send them to me. Good. Yeah. Yeah. I might put a boat. I might put a boat on it. I might. But your thing is somewhere between 19 and 35 on it. You know, in my mind, before we looked it up, I was actually thinking about 4,000. Uh, to be honest with you. Just to get familiar with the vehicle. Right well, now I know what it would cost to fix it. And on the interior, on the space. Yeah, oh yeah. Don't have too many cigarette burns. No, 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 no cigarette burns. No, no dog hair in the back seat. Yeah. Can't get dog hair. Tell me. That's cool. I think this vehicle, you know, it's not. It, it'll still fit in beside in the garage. Yeah, yeah between them, yeah. Because yeah. it's not a huge. You know, it's not a big pickup. There's enough money in the vehicle budget for 
Yeah. Just for the courthouse. This is for this year. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get it out for next year. It's That's why we went ahead and moved on it. Yeah. 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 Now, you guys yeah. used to have a car for the courthouse, right? And you got rid of that in there just last year? Uh, or a while ago? Three years ago. So. Okay, because I kind of remember when we got rid of it. And we don't, we don't pay out a lot in mileage, so it really isn't a problem if we don't have a courthouse vehicle. But it might be in it. You might use it. Sometimes. I mean, if they're not using it, somebody mm -hmm. might go in it. But yeah, but this here vehicle, I mean, you guys can go, you guys can go out and look at Exactly. You know, that's kind of why we went with this. And we did go with the pickup. We talked a little bit, you know, as long as, you know, it would probably be, it might be handy for around the courthouse, you know, for, <coughs> things that need to be hauled off instead of by the road and bridge all the time. I mean, that, that could, to where the blazer you know, can't haul up and off with it. We have magnetic signs. Because if you guys used it, you probably wouldn't want the county appraiser. No, I don't. I don't, know. I don't want that either. Well, you see a lot of county vehicles at KAC and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You I say those are. Those are. Those make the next slide still go off in there. Mm -hmm. Number 865. Mm -hmm. Who? Who says it's good? Science. I love it. I love it. I take them off if I go to class. I wouldn't want to drive down the interstate or nothing like that. Yeah. Yep, so far so good anyway. I'll probably, I'll probably lose one today. <laughs> <laughs> you know that, right? Re magnetize. Uh, <laughs> Just probably. as you turn the corner and start to work both of them while. I've lost it. So will you let Jerry know that I call him okay? I need a motion. I'd like the motion that we allow for the 2019 what is that Ford Ranger the purchase of that for $29,595 a second okay we have a motion and a second to purchase the Ford Ranger for the Ranger for $29,595 all in favor say aye 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 thank you thanks <coughs> okay. and then you're going to put the Laser out on a sale bid. That's a lot of way. Yeah, uh, I can't. I don't think I think Brian's a big guy. I know, but can, you don't do it. I can do it, but just do so. Trying to pay 6% commission. Yeah, I think so. So we just run one ad and the paper two ad to the one ad. What year is it, please? 2003. You have all that on the insurance. Yeah, it's my bad. It's a blazer out here still. Mm -hmm. Do you need something Because I'm going to go to Stafford no. today. Just park it out. So you want me to park the new one in there tonight? or you Probably. Need? So just park it out in the parking lot. <laughs> Because yeah, I think we're supposed to get some rain tonight, aren't we? No, it's not going to rain tonight. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Where is that blizzard? Right. It's in the garage. It's in the garage. Yeah. Still, it's nice because somebody local can get get on it versus them having to register a bit on auction website. Okay, I will do that. Okay, so you you don't need that. You don't need the picture. You know what it's like. Oh, surely nothing does it. Well, since he's made one sale, he shouldn't forget that. Yeah. He might have maybe I'll get maybe I'll get Marmy's pump too since you're the first sale. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You get a picture you hand the check to him. Hey, we showed it. <laughs> yeah, we 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 went over looked at brand these brand new ones and they're they're like forty three thousand dollars and this is a year just a year old and it's good and that's sixty thousand dollars. I thought it was you know fine. That's what it is. It's very clean. Is that a V six or V six? Yeah. So that'd be nice too. Jerry's familiar with the roads, and he thought this would be fine down here too. He's a seller. He'll tell you what. Yeah. Except he didn't want to play. He'll probably. 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 He'll prob
<coughs> You'll probably buy it back. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> and it'll be back up over here. <laughs> it'll be right here. Uh, it'll be right here. It'll be right here. Okay, that's all I have. Thank you. Sounds good. Okay. I make a motion that we accept the minutes from the June 17th meeting. Second. Motion and second to approve the minutes from June 17th. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carried. Actual corrections. Second. Clay, do you have the historical budget yet? No. I have received a phone call from you today. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to serve you like last year. That's what I think. That's what we go with. What's the state nine o'clock? Anyway. I don't want some muscle in the tops. Supreme made the audit results for one thing. Um, I hope she's talking to you. She has a draft of the budget there. I hope. I think And this will just be the first draft of it. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and make the transition. I sent it to her. Right um, we did have a window blow out upstairs on the fourth floor. Um, those windows, the storm windows, where there's storm windows are inside of these windows. Because they could, there's bars on the windows up there. Well, the one that's left open. And it'll, yeah, that one. Some prisoner. <laughs> It was the, it's the window that you have to change the bulb to the light for the flag pole, so it's always up. It doesn't make it right, but it's always up, I was told. So that wind just blew glass all over the law library. So I had Phillips guys come up and shut it. So, um, I called the Indian, or Jim Lowe with their super small. So it's just the inside storm windows that's blown out the regular windows. Yeah, the regular okay. old windows fine. Yeah. We'll recess. We'll recess. That's all the damage. That was, mine. was that one yours? Okay. <laughs> okay. So just the timing issue. It it was published in yes. the end. Mm -hmm. It just wasn't done by that certain cutoff. Yeah. So that's um, in the end, the community was notified. It just wasn't by that date cut off of the statute. And then we did have um, one more with the county treasurer. You know, they have the special motor vehicle fund. There's a rule in there at the end of last year. So this year we have to transfer that by June 1st, that remaining balance sitting in that special motor vehicle fund back to the general fund. That transfer didn't occur by June 1st of what that balance was, so we noted that. It eventually happened. It just didn't happen by that June 1st date. So when we looked at the I think I'm not sure what date it was, but it was a little bit later. Where's, so, that, where's that noted at? Oh, sorry, page 13. So, yeah, right there on note 15 under stewardship and compliance. All right. And then on page 14, that is a summary of the capital lease. That's for the ambulance. And I believe that gets fully paid off here in 2021. So, um, there, there are some things that I would like to discuss regarding that and how you look and how that's posted within the books. Um, I have, in fact, I'll just switch over to page 18 in regards to that. Uh, kind of lead into my discussion when we look at your budget as well. Just some things to keep in mind. So we might need to look on how much we're funding the EMS department with public funds and we may need fund a little bit more. And part of it is because we do have that ambulance purchase going on. The EMS reserve account only has about 30000 sitting in it. I got found in the market. So 
because we look at that, 48,000 at the end of the year. So we're not putting funds into it the last two years just for the fact that we were paying for that lease. However, cash is looking to get a little bit tight within that operating fund. I think for 2021, you're probably going to have to look at paying that lease payment out of hand. That's reserved, or we're going to have to bump up what we're going to get from that fund. So, uh, but we could talk about that detail. But I just wanted to point that out because your cash went down from 27,000 to 7,400 and 19 within that fund. So that that would be one that I would say let's kind of watch a little bit and make sure that we're funding that properly with the budget. I don't think she put that in her budget. She didn't. She thought it was KHL. She did put it in 2021? It, it, it is on 2021s because that's, the, I saw that last time. Okay. So okay. It is the last payment. It is $30,000, I think. 30, 30, 30, 30. Yeah, 30000 even. 29000 is principal. 815 is interest. So, not, not bad on the interest that you're paying. But that last payment hits in 2020. So just keep that fund in mind as you're looking at the budget. Um, other than that, the rest of the funds, nothing really jumped out as um, anything that I need to bring to your attention. Do you guys have questions on any specific funds you'd like to look at in more detail right now? Or do you want to wait until we look at the budget? We didn't transfer anything out of Rosie Bridge. Correct. Um, is that? something we could do? Was there any room there to transfer? <laughs> we were going to talk about it after the audit. Um. Alright. So, with the Room Bridge Fund, if you pull it here, you have 361000 of the ending cash about the power of cash. I think it's a good decision right now to not have that transfer made in 19 just for cash reserves within the operating fund. I think we're going to see that you do have some flexibility within your budget. Um, I put the numbers together last night. It's raw data and I have a copy for each of you here. But um, I think we're going to have some room to build in some transfers to try to start building some of the reserves back up budget was not as hard and desperate as I was intending. Expecting to see what the current economic situation, I don't know if desperate is the right word, <laughs> it's just popping into my head. But yes, you took a drop in your valuation, about three million, I think, when I looked at that number. Five, five million? I'll have to double check that. Um, but it, it's not having as big of an impact when I put the department requests in. I don't have all the departments I could on it, but we can go over those numbers. So I think there's going to be some work in there to build on some trades. So the unencumbered, I wasn't sort of paid yet when you oh, first saw yep. that. The mm -hmm. unencumbered cash is 361000 Yes, at the right. end of 19. <coughs> okay. So last year was at 429620 and with us dropping that and just the pattern, I mean, Road and Bridge takes quite a bit of resources to maintain your roads and things like that. So it, it's good to leave a reserve within there. I understand the need to build up the equipment reserve as well, but for this year with your budget situation, yes, you had 216000 of budget authority still to be able to spend. However, keep in mind that 200000 is of the chunk of that is that plug that we put into the budget just in case we have additional revenue coming in that we didn't anticipate. We build a $200,000 miscellaneous income, a $200,000 miscellaneous expense to loss each other out so we're not letting additional public funds within there, but still giving us that authority so we don't have to spend the extra costs to amend the budget, do a publication, things like that. So um, so it was a pretty tight budget year for them now, if you take out the efficient. So I, I think that was a good choice for 19 not to do that. I think for 2020, we could possibly look at, let's see how things are coming out. Um, maybe you can holler at me or Danielle, you know, come September, if you want us to look at numbers and kind of help guide you guys a little bit on where you're coming out compared to what we need for budget for 2021. And 
we've been building some options there for you that you need to start setting aside. So. Any other questions, or did I answer that question? that you guys, because I know you just got the printed copies today, so as you're looking through it, if you have additional questions, holler at me at any point in time. You can reach me up at the Great Bend office, email, phone call. Um, we'd be more than happy to come back down to another maybe work session with the commission if you guys are wanting that, things like that. So, I'm always working with that. So, I will, I'm sorry, what? The insurance reserve that's Health insurance. That is correct. That is part of being um, self-insured. So that is the reserve that you set aside in the event that you have employees with astronomical health care costs, you know, because you just never know. Um, did that gross much just because we didn't have any health or anything? That's what it does not have. And, and, and that can be something that you can visit with about your... Um, Insure your, um, what do I call it, TPA, your advisor who helps you as a PMI that you're using. So um, when we look at that reserve that you're setting aside each month, I mean, obviously we grew quite a bit. If they can go through and do kind of a projection for you saying, hey, this is how much really needs to be set aside in the reserve. Um, I, I don't think you're too far off here, but I don't know that you need to continue building it. It might be a good idea to visit with them and see, hey, can we, can we back off a year and utilize that to fill yeah. up some reserves, and then the next year go back and we'll talk about that. So, so, might be a good idea to have that conversation just to see, because that is a, and that can go back and forth on you. One year you might be sitting really good and not have to put any aside, and the next year you're like. You know, yeah. you use half your funds sitting there, so then you're in a bind having to that's scramble and reposition. So that's why we've always just kept it where we were at. So yeah, we weren't doing the seven pounds. Yeah. So, so I mean, so yeah, you might have some flexibility there, but just keep that in mind that if you have that complete turnaround, you're gonna have to make that up. So be a little cautious on yeah. that too. Yeah. So. No worries, sir. On page 48, why isn't there anything on the uh, current year? That is because that fund was closed in the previous year. So the oil and gas fund, trust fund, that was yeah. money that the state was holding at one point in time, and basically a reserve fund of the state. Um, back in 13, 14? It was a while ago, but, that just but it, it, it went from legislation we to yeah. pass it back down to the counties at it's that not point. Gone. Okay. And it was <laughs> up to the county commission's <laughs> discretion <laughs> on how to use that. They gave authority that you could, it could be used for operations, it could be used to set reserves. I believe if we go back to last year's audit, because that's when that transfer happened, I think we put the majority of it in we equipment it, reserve. We put it all in the capital. Was it capital improvement? Okay, I can't remember which fund we put that into. So um, it, it's sitting there. You haven't lost it. It's just now. Yeah. It's it's still there. We just yes. that as a precaution. Just yes. want to double yes. check. <laughs> <laughs> just for special purposes on that. And if you decide it's not needed within the capital improvement fund, the commission does have the authority to reverse that transfer. That reverse transfer, since this fund is officially closed at this point, would reverse it back to the general fund, and then general fund would have authority to transfer it where it is. So, so it is uh, in capital. It is in capital improvement. So building improvements, new construction, things like that. If it's needed for equipment, we would need to do a reverse transfer and move it to the equipment reserve fund to expend those, since we are under statute limitations of what we can pay out of the capital. So. Basically, it's setting aside as a reserve to maintain your infrastructure. Right? So, so. Um, give me just a second. 
second column to set the first name to get that. Special Capital Improvement Fund is on page 37. The idea was just to yeah, clean up the bookkeeping list in the county a little bit, but less fun for treasurer and clerk to maintain and keep track of, and then it sets it aside for reserve that way. Um, if it's still sitting in that oil and gas, you always have that risk that state comes down and says, "Hey, anybody remaining <coughs> in that fund, you now have new guidance to follow." Not saying that that would have happened, but there's always a risk of that because laws change every day. So you just don't know. So that was also the part of our recommendation that we began closing that last year just so we can make sure that the county can hold on to those funds and their reserves. So 138000 that came out of that was for the building? I believe so. And the two funds that we were talking about that aren't included in that first page summary, those are at the very last two pages on page 49. That's the distributable funds and the state funds, meaning those are the funds where we collect the taxes for all taxing entities within the county or even for the state for uh, collecting the state taxes and then remitting those back out. Uh, typically, your state funds and subdivision funds will all end up with a zero balance. Sometimes there's a little bit of a timing difference. You have a little bit of a balance sitting in there with some cemeteries. And it's just a matter of when the taxes are collected or when the distribution happens. So uh, nothing too big to be concerned about seeing the $73 for the total cemetery sitting there. Um, that would have got distributed out from that first distribution in January of 2021. And then the remaining funds, you don't see those zero out at the top of the distributable because that's a continuous collection. It's never an in and out. You're always going to have people handling the taxes, things of that sort, so you're not going to have that one clear out this evening. <coughs> and then go to the next page on page 15. We have those agency funds that I was talking about. So the first three that you have are your key offices. Um, and that's a lot of those, those are um, the items that each, like Nina's office, she collects the game and license fees, does park moving permits, things like that. So that's just a little bit of the activity that's remaining within hers that is not yet turned over to the county because she's operating cash to the street funds, things like that. Um, and then district court, their uh, state system, but that is still ran within the county books. So that's disclosed there on what they have. And then sheriff, they have their special funds that they're allowed to use within their collection. So those are what the first three are. And then the rest are specific funds for fees coming in within the county, but those fees cannot be remitted to the general fund because they can only be spent on specific items. So they have to remain within those separate funds and used for those purposes. So the uh, sales tax is the total sales tax that we put. Yeah, sales, sales tax is what is collected and then we're that out for special purposes, yes. But that's the total sales tax, that's not our 1% yeah. that we get. So what is the county's percent of sales tax we would actually get? Okay. Okay. You go to page 16 with your general fund. So what comes to the county as sales tax, it goes into your general fund, and you'll see that you receive $278,826. Okay. Next page, page 16. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's about halfway, halfway down, down under, last one under. That's invented in, yes. What, what percent of the current sales tax collected goes to the city of the county? 
Yes. One percent in Stafford County. Yes. Over 8.5 total of the total amount collected. Correct. So you're going to, it depends on where the sales tax is collected at because each city has its own rate. So if something's sold here in St. John, you have the state rate, the county rate, then the city rates. Uh, if I go over to Stafford, that's probably got a higher rate over there with their, they have some projects going on. Are they like 9.5? Okay. I think they're a higher rate over there. Or 8.5. So, yes. It just seemed like the 276,000 was a pretty good percentage of what was listed on the back here. But that, is, that is not all sales tax collected in here. That's the specific sales tax that's in the agency fund. Because the sales tax is distributed by the state of Kansas. We don't this, correct. This is a different type of sales tax that's within that fund. So that is going to be, I believe, when we have, um, I don't want to say that, motor vehicle, I think, I believe that is the motor vehicle ones. So if we have, if residents go down to like Oklahoma and purchase a vehicle down in Oklahoma City, their dealership's going to ask them, where are you tagging your vehicle? Well, they're not going to charge sales tax down there because the state of Kansas is entitled to that sales tax. That's where the vehicle's going to be titled. So then when they come over here to write a short vehicle, they then have to pay sales tax when they put that tag on there. So that's what's being remitted. So that actually gets remitted back to the state, and then the state turns around and remits it back. Right there, Correct. So Oklahoma doesn't charge a sales tax, and then we add our, if ours is different. It, it depends on how the dealership handles it. Yeah, it, shouldn't, it, it. It shouldn't be charged in Oklahoma if you're tagging it here, because you have to pay the state, because that's where the car is being delivered. So some dealerships don't always follow that, and you'll see that you pay it there. They take that into consideration when you tag it. You have to bring your bill yeah, and sell it. And you'll have right. to pay the difference if you should have paid more yeah. here, because they'll report that where it was paid, and then that's on the state to figure that part out, not on the county. Yeah, that's so. okay. And then the city gets a little bit, and the county gets a little bit. Correct. But and, then, like, and the state keeps their nice little chunk. Yeah. <laughs> so when I go out to a uh, shortstop and buy, you know, a cup of coffee, there's sales tax on that. We get 1% of that. Right? Correct. Okay. Correct. And is that in this fund? That is in general fund, yes. Okay. That's all of it. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's part of that 276000 Correct. Okay. Correct. Now, the timing of when it gets distributed from the state, it might not be that you paid it this month, you get it this month. It's probably a month or two behind. I'm not sure the time you want the state distributes that out, but it eventually comes back. So, correct. <laughs> so, any other questions on financials or anything like that? Good questions. I feel like I've been tested. I don't I know, usually right? get questions. I know. <laughs> I'll go ahead and jump into the two loose leaf letters that you have in there as well. The first one is our management letter, and there's no surprises on that. Same things that we're reporting year after year. Um, that is the one where we have to report any material weaknesses or significant deficiencies. Material weaknesses are items that could potentially lead to material discrepancies on the financial statements. Significant are less than material but still bring a certain level. I do not have any material weaknesses to disclose to you guys this year. We only have the one significant deficiency. It's honestly a deficiency that's going to be out of your control. It's due to having enough employees to have proper segregation of duties. It's just there is a potential since we have some we have enough controls in place but we don't have a true segregation of duties throughout the county. So there is a chance that something could happen, a check and balance doesn't get caught or doesn't work properly, that we could end up having things go to the wrong fund or something of that sort. So we're just required to put that out there saying that there is a potential that could happen not to think it's happening. 
the governance letter is the letter where we just go through and state um, whether we had any disagreements with management, things like that. We did not uncorrect these statements. We did not have any incorrect these statements <coughs> this year. Um, things of that sort. And then starting at the bottom of the second page, just some little items for controls or procedures, things that we see as we work on um, the different areas in our audit procedures, so areas that we might have to clean. You know, I have the health department listed here, and actually with the health department, we just put this in here because we wanted to communicate that things have made some progress in there. You know, we had some transition going on where receipts weren't quite tying back 100% when we tried to tie it to what was the to the county treasurer, some of it's timing issues, some of it's on how we recorded things. You know, we've got that variance down to $549 this year. And, you know, it's just, it, it could be a number of things when you're dealing with insurance write-offs, things like that. To us, it wasn't worth time to dig into, I should say worth the time. It wasn't material enough to warrant further investigation for the $549. So I think they're doing really good just to keep up the work on doing the reconciliation and we've communicated that to the department. Um, the next one is with the sheriff's office. Um, same thing there. Move back to reconciling what they collect and what gets remitted to the treasurer's office. It's part of that system of double checks um, to make sure that it gets recorded in the proper fund, especially with their funds for the fact that things that are collected within their department. So a lot of that can only be spent on certain items. So that's important to make sure that those are getting recorded in the correct fund on the county side on that tracking. And then just watching dates. Um, we use QuickBooks within that fund. QuickBooks is very easy to code a date incorrectly or something like that. Just we recommend that reconciliation is continue to happen. So. <laughs> and then county clerk's office. Um, this is relatable with that. It's actually probably something that county clerk and county treasurer need to work on together. Um, we had a few funds that we collect taxes for. Um, and distribute out, I think it was, it was a hospital service for the other thing. But basically what is happening is we have budget authority stills within those funds and we still have a remaining unencumbered cash. And so those dollars are levied for that purpose. We should distribute those within that last distribution of the year to utilize that full budget of the four. Um, and I think a lot of that is the timing of when that distribution happens as to when collections are processed um, on that. So I think um, maybe a little bit more communication. Like, cause I think it's, they, they are collecting more, didn't have vouchers posted or something to that sort. I'm not sure quite so what happened with that. They don't have their work. So can I do a distribution and, and this is, this after is, the last distribution date? Let's say do we finally get caught up? Can Lisa and I go back and look and do a fifth distribution? That would be fine as long as it's within December 30th. It's not and our fault that it, and I, I they're so far behind. I, I agree with that. If it's after this, trying to be tactful, I, I know. it makes me mad when I get rid of that. Don't take this line up. Don't take I this letter as a write-up. But I want it to be clear that it's not right. The clerk or the treasurer's fault. We need to get our paperwork done on time. And yeah. Yeah. There, there was a little bit of timing issues. I, I don't know the full details but, of it, but what we did uh, was we we distributed it at the first distribution in January. Right. They did get it. yes. Mm -hmm. But we don't know how to fix it for the for the current year it's in. It's going to happen this year. So I guarantee. Did they not have it processed by December thirty first? Then even for you at that point? No. Okay. So at that point, we don't. Know at that do. point, you can't do anything about it. So, um, but I didn't know if we could say towards the end of December look see 
and then do, like I said, a fifth one to mm -hmm. if we need to. Yep, you can certainly do that. And the only reason why we're saying to look at that is just because of those. I mean, they're going to eventually get their funds. I mean, yeah, a couple of weeks probably is going to make that big of a difference for some of those things. I'm, I make this recommendation more along the lines for the budget, for the fact that that might create a budget authority issue going into the next year to distribute that out. It's not necessarily that, oh, we held on to their funds. I'm thinking more along the lines that that might put a bind on us on budget authority if we don't have that built in into the budget for the next year. You may not have the authority to spend it all out if it was posted in reconcile. But yeah, if it's not processed before you're in, we don't have the ability to do that, to pay that out time. Because you can't go with back data check. No. And you can't, uh -huh. the, the appropriations can't be ran as an account to pay the line. But we can do a, an additional distribution if we need to. Correct. Um, and, and that Nina brings up a good point. I mean, timing is everything. If, it, if we get behind on processing collections, it does put financial records on hold. You guys are getting uh, incomplete financial data when you're asking for it and making those decisions that you're in. Because um, I know we have that conversation at year end about making year end transfers um, and not having all the data processed. And I believe we put those off and retroactively the transfers that you're in too. Um, so things to keep in mind. So it is very important to try to keep those collections up to date. You know, if things aren't processed in a timely fashion, it can really have a domino effect on that. So it could be that maybe look at procedures. Do we need to close the office for a day or two to get popped up? Do we need to approve overtime things like that that you might just visit with your elected officials and see what the options are and if you want me to dig into a little bit further on what's going on I can definitely come up with some more recommendations so, uh, as far as the financial records all of the data actually did get recorded within the proper period and that's what we're focused on um, but the timeliness of when it gets processed can really have a detriment So that was not written just to specifically no, call you out. So. I know. I know. I know. I know we missed. I mean, we just didn't know. But I didn't know we could do it. This was Any questions for me on the audit report at this point? And that would be before December 31. As long as I can get it done before December 31. Mm -hmm. If, if, if everything is. I'm not sure that didn't help you. Yeah, because I don't know that you can work not to your 13. Wait a minute, do you run those distributions through the accounts payable cycle? So you would have to, we'd you have might be able to run that through the 13th. Well, well no, because you're going to run into issues because it's going to a distributing fund. Yep. Yeah, we can't do that. We've got to get it it's done not in our last AP run records. of the year. Yes. So. Because otherwise, the, the, you're going to have a timing issue of what you say you distributed to what they collected yes. on cash basis. Yes, so we couldn't do period 15. Because they can't pick it up as now it's receivable on their side. So I, we've got to do that in that last run. Yes. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. I will make a note on that um, <coughs> and think on that and see what other options are. But if, if that's the case, that that's continuing to happen. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm used to it. I know. <laughs> All right. I do have a question. Um, as far as the the audit and budgets and stuff like that, you know, when I took the position, I was just appointed, and I think if you get elected though, the first time you're elected. Is there a class you go to or something? There's a, com there, well, there used to be, I don't know if they're going to do it this year. There's a new commissioner, uh, like one or two day session. Uh, yeah, right. Well, mm -hmm. what I was wondering about is there is there any way that, because we may have two new commissioners, I think 
we're going to have one new commissioner coming up this year, sure. and somebody's running against me, so we may have two new commissioners. Is there any way that we can keep two copies of this to oh, give yeah. to the I, new commissioners? Oh, and I get yeah. an electronic copy. I get electronic, give an electronic yes. copy when I get back to the office, and then I can always reproduce additional copies on these two if we need to reproduce mm -hmm. some additional. Because I mean, when I took my um, when I took my spot, I mean the first time I saw one of these was when I first came in here or when we first sat down. Is there any way in January that they can look at it, or they take January. they take January? I've got Sorry, a couple no, options for you on that. I would first take advantage of any of the state courses that are offered. Um, they turned the budget sessions this year into remote, so it's very possible that they may look at doing that for new commissioners as well. Because I mean, it's going to be hard for new commissioners, especially with economic times that all the counties across the state are looking at. So I think that's a valuable course for them to partake in if they can. So hopefully they offer it virtually, nothing else. If that's not, and it's just a course that you want to offer so they understand the that is a service that I can offer you. It will not jeopardize the independence just to come down, go through the financials, explain how each fund works, things like that. It would be an additional fee to the county, but it might be considered a valuable fee because it might help that commissioner make um, educated um, decisions on the financial status of the county and all that. And I'd probably already kept with NEDA. We'd probably do a joint training for that commissioner. And, and for that matter, NEDA might be able to just do the training but I don't know with the election year and things like that. I know you've got a lot on your plate within the office. But it would be too, after the so. election. True. For, so. But I mean, just the way, you know, it's awful confusing on some mm -hmm. of these deals as far as what can be spent where. Correct. How stuff works. And it would be nice, of course, to look through here, make out, you know, highlight some areas and then either come in and talk to me or have a sit down with you. Yep. Um, get questions answered. Yeah, I would actually recommend, you know, we would look at the audited finance, most recent audited financials, plus the most recent budget that was completed, and look at those together simultaneously, because I think you get a full round of picture that way. Yep. So I think it would be better for the legislature than the KAC. Uh -uh. No, you're not no, but you're, just not gonna you're gonna they're gonna cover you're some grass. valuable insights yeah. that I would dig into because I'm gonna focus more on the financial yeah. aspect, not the statutes that the commission is truly responsible for as well. I focus more on the financial side. Most was yeah. good, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it will be a lot better. Than I mean, I think it would be right. valuable if the person could sit down with the one who's going to come and talk with you and get a better idea instead of just waiting. Uh, seven months into the deal, when you get this and you look at it the first time, and you try to start asking, asking questions. Yep, and then um, another course I always like to recommend um, now, sometimes it goes over the head because you, you guys hire us to do the budget. Um, nothing wrong with that. We, we appreciate the business, and I actually enjoy working on budgets. It's fun. You guys may not think it's fun. Sorry. <laughs> I like the type of work. Um, but they do offer that budget course as well. Now the budget course that they offer is more on how to prepare it, but there, there is a section in there that they do go over upcoming changes within the legislation. Now this year, the changes that they had discussed within there was focusing on, I think it was HB 2702 or something like that. It was uh, a bill that was actually going to repeal the tax lid. And honestly create more work for your office when I read it. <laughs> it did not pass. But I think they're going to probably still continue to try to push for that because I think they're going to need a little bit different of a route. However, a different type of limit will go into place with it. Right now their idea was to put a rate limit in place. But then a lot more and more additional communication was going to have to be sent out to the public by now versus just a yes. publication of the paper. So, is there anything um, in that publication that wasn't already in their tax if, if that bill wouldn't pass? Yes, for the fact that you would, the notification would have to um, go to each resident within, say, City of St. John wanted to change their rates. With that, you would have to send it out to all residents within the City of St. John that, get, that are included within those taxing. But wouldn't that always been on their tax statement? It, it wouldn't have been on their tax statement. Their tax statement would be coming after the fact. 
the so the whole purpose of this is to notify them in advance. Rather than having to actually hold a public vote, this is to make public aware that, hey, we're making that change. Because let's be honest, who all reads the municipal publications in the paper? I sit there and send them to the paper for you, but me personally as a resident, I don't open that section of the paper and read it. So it's just going to give... So they're trying to get more community involvement to get people to actually show up to the budget hearings to give them the opportunity to voice their concern. I, I think that's the direction of the thought process with part of that bill, the way it's written. I, I don't know if it's reasonable what their expectations were with it. I think there were, that was part of the concerns and part of why it didn't pass. I mean, there was other things built in with that bill too, so I don't know exactly where it went. But yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if that comes up well, again in a different form. form. So, but the, my point of that um, was that you know you can go attend those budget sessions, maybe not for the commission that attend the full thing. Depends on if they like financials and really want to try to understand it. Might be beneficial to attend if they understand the whole process of setting the budget up a little bit. Um, it is overwhelming when you go to it for the first time and have never done it. But that first section of that day of that course does have some good information in it too. And it's usually, I think it's not a $75 fee to attend that course. So it's not an unreasonable amount for a quick education. So that would be an option too for any commissioner or even an existing commissioner. I attend it every year. So it's just a nice refresher. <laughs> <laughs> That's because I just send you everything. <laughs> like, what are we doing? Because you just pass it on. So, I, <laughs> <laughs> Why, you I think I do tell her when they're at work. She does. That she does. does. I send her the email. Here. She does. So. <laughs> All right. So at that point, if you don't have any more questions on the audit, um, I would say you can go ahead and go with your motion on that until we get something to the budget. Okay. Or do you have other people that need to be on here? Yeah, we do need a motion to approve the audit. 2019. I'll make a motion that we approve the 2019 audit. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the 2019 audit. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. And I still need to bring the draft letter back. I have not seen that. Well, I them, call them. I got an email from the legal secretary and I called the office in Hutch. I, I'm okay since I got the email response, but I need the true written sign letter back before I can close my office. So you put a little pressure on that side for me. I would appreciate it. Okay. All right. Do you have a little time to wait? I do. Okay. I do. Yeah, we, we need to get Carolyn and Philip in here and then we have no Okay. Will it be a while? Because I can come back and go over to the office and do things and come back, or you want me to just hang out? No, what do you think? Oh, I don't think, I don't know. 10, 15. Oh, I'll just throw them out there. Well, SDI is in here at 10. Yeah. yeah. It's going to take 5, 10 yeah. minutes. Yeah. So. Yeah. Not a problem. Okay. Shouldn't be too long. I got plenty of them, so I can go catch up on the county and everything else. And keep in mind, all of you have more questions, I'm glad to have this conversation with the fun. So keep your questions coming. <laughs> I like numbers too. It's kind of fun to hear somebody else that feels in the room. I'm going to sit right here. Come on up where you can get the view of the camera. I'm sure. I'm just trying to get up. What did you do? <laughs> All those big swings last night. Good football last night. He ran basketball 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 last night. He ran Oh, I, <laughs> no. I let him do his job. Was it a little, was it a little kid basketball or other? No, it was high school. Uh, no. Oh, yeah, I do. You want that? You can keep it. <laughs> I might get one. <laughs> might be a quarter. They're still dry. Don't break down, start crying if we hurt you. <laughs> 
Uh, it's kind of a short-sighted argument, and yeah. aren't you going to have the final say? Kind of like a referee. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm on the wrong end of the stick on this side. <laughs> yeah. You got to know what it's like to be on both sides. Of that. All right. Um, Matt, I think what Carolyn was, we're probably going to have to set up some sort of task for, for this part. And probably ought to be included. And I, I know Kate has made some phone calls, I made some phone calls. You know, some of the schools need to be involved in this. Maybe, and I don't know if you get all three superintendents. I mean, you don't want to get so many people that it becomes cumbersome. But this is also going to be a very financially detailed. It's going to take somebody some time on it. That is for sure because there are P's and Q's here. But if you cross and they come up and they don't like what you've done, you're going to ask for the money. You have the resolution, a copy of the resolution yes. in front of you. So, how many person board do you think you, have, you guys talking about that together? Well, I thought the smaller is better, but now I'm not sure after talking around. How many do you think, like the three school board? Superintendents. Superintendents and then like one person off the city council? Well, what do you think? I would say the city clerk. I mean, the council's really not going to deal with this. The clerk would have to I mean, it would be like one of you guys on the board. I think you, you should stay back. I, personally, I think you should stay back. Well, I think and, and, should be on. And then, <laughs> unless you have, and then if you have some ideas. Yeah, I'll tell you what. I'll do that. <laughs> I'll take over the can work. Oh. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I don't have like some of the maybe the correspondence that he's getting from the state, but I do participate in, like a listserv with other counties economic development wise and I'm getting some traffic on what other counties are doing. So for example, this is Ellsworth County. School, medical center, public health officer, municipalities, emergency preparedness, rural broadband, economic development, county commission, and attorney. Yeah, and I don't, yeah, I'm not a little part of the attorney has time for it. Well, <laughs> the issue is just making sure you've got well, like, your P's and Q's. And the whole issue of it is. And then you were, yeah. an auditor it might be. Uh, Tell him to come in and say that. There is a WebEx. Uh, on Friday. That's three o'clock. That's three o'clock. That's the one I was trying to send you. And I think I got an agenda for. Uh, yeah. It wasn't right. I'm not going to hear, but I'm going to have Lisa Weber set in on it because we're supposed to have um, some spreadsheets and then she'll get it to you to track all this. Mm -hmm. and so she's going to set in on it. Um, it might not hurt if one of you did. I mean, and I don't you know. You can do it from home. It's just, yeah, it's, it's a good so, It's not something I honestly was going to have Melissa see if she could set in on it, too. Because I uh, I don't know about this. I mean, it's going to take I, if she, if administration. Somebody, if somebody along with Melissa has time, I would think it would be beneficial. I mean, they're auditors, you know, are going to on the side of caution. Because in the end, Somebody and, messes and up their we, money, we, we have to pay it back. Yeah, it's, yeah, and right now we're in no position. That's so really it's just our next out anyway. Are you saying we're going to screw Melissa or have Melissa on the committee? I'll ask Melissa if she can participate. I was going to talk to her. You have to pay her. Yeah, but I mean, and I think, mean, can, I think you, that kind of stuff, yes, you, you are incurring new expenses yes. to participate in this program. I think you can include that as an expense. Yeah, um, I, I just think it would I think be, it'd be worth it to have it on. Yeah, have it on. Yeah, she could be. Yeah, because you're hired. So do you need for us to decide how many person I, board we're going to have? Or well, I, we don't have to do anything. I mean, there's something. Yeah, I mean, probably needs to be taken a week for, you know, the study of this kind of hazard to do this to make sure uh -huh. these people will be willing to serve. Somebody's not willing to serve. There's no sense appointed. I mean, you might so start thinking about who you want to appoint. So Mike has got to look at this resolution over first. Yeah, yeah you need somebody from some you know, one person from business. But I mean, I do like I mean, the idea of having the three city clerks and then the you three. You have six city clerks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess you got to include them all. Well, six, six, you six need to clerks. Invite them. The three superintendents, because they have the best idea of what things. Yeah. 
Yeah. Or Melissa. Right. And, and it might even be something you don't have to have everyone in the same room to actually accomplish the work. It may be a matter of I mean, giving the an itemization of the things that you want to consider. I mean, they'd be invited to the meetings. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, or at least somebody can disseminate the information to them or they understand it and don't fill that out. I don't know that there's a whole lot you can do for those little towns, but you don't want to leave anything out. I picked the city clerks, the school superintendents are the good ones. I don't know if you're going to be able to get Mike to come down to those meetings. It would yeah. be nice to. I think I can ask if Melissa sounds like. You're saying Mike Melissa. is in the attorney? Yeah. I think Melissa's probably got the skill yeah. set that will Cindy. serve Cindy. us in this uh, case. Cindy, Cindy Bill. Bill. Is Cindy Bryan there talking about? Yeah. No, because that, that, I mean, we're trying to figure out where we need to go with this money. I mean, other than that, I mean, Nita's going to need to be on there or some, some representative. I'm just thinking for future work. Is it work. my well, is you know, going to be on we're going to yeah, but it's, and I don't need to be the head correct? of this committee. I'm I mean, sure. I've got road work coming up, and so my time is. That would I mean, be my time is so to do also but somewhere I mean, else. So if it's it got to be paid back, it'd be paid back through your office. So I would think it would be the one that would be so, Well, it'd be got to be paid back through the county. Yeah. I mean, it's going to call it. I would imagine a new would be powerful. Yeah. I mean, that's not. About That's why we need Melissa to. I mean, Rob, 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 Rob should be out. on it just so if there's stuff in law enforcement. There's just too many things we don't know. Side. So, given that there isn't, you know, full guidance on how to handle this and what is eligible and not, I can see what other counties are doing is that they're already starting their plans, though, even without full information. And they're basically kind of doing list A, this is what we would like to do. Let's get confirmation. If it's not eligible there, then we'll kind of, here's list B of the things we would choose next. And it's, and it's all has to be tied back to yes. Some of the stuff I'm seeing, for example, so far, again, we want more guidance to make sure that it's clearly the case. You can't take stuff to replace revenues into the county. Mm -hmm. Clearly can't. But, for example, if Nita has much more time this year related to election compliance because of all the things we're doing with mail and ballots and blah, 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 because of COVID, that time can be reimbursed. And so there's maybe but different. That's already been reimbursed for the Secretary of State's office. Okay, so, so I mean, that's, that's the best example. But that's was your the, time? I mean, they probably would reimburse materials, but they reimburse your time. We would have been paid for the time to be paid. I mean, it's not like it was extra time. You didn't have to do any overtime, no. so it was just your time. But we've already been tracking what we've been to pay for, the, you know, the stuff we could turn, yeah, turn so in on FEMA, so we don't overlap, is what we're trying to track. Yeah. And that's stuff going to be, like and that's probably where Melissa can help us make sure that we're not overlapping. But, you know. I mean, most of this is taken care of through the schools, but are all these laptops or whatever they're using? So, and just having a person that is clearly the person that you go to with, you know, the request, if that's what you want to call it. So, for example, this is one of those little things that the Stafford County Fair is looking at giving out hand sanitizer to all those that participate. And, you know, that's not something they normally budget for, but if they spend $500 on hand sanitizer, that's clearly a connected to COVID expenditure. That, to me, sounds like it should easily qualify. Who who does that request? Who does the request go to? You know, is it, is it spent by the fair board and then reimbursed by the county, or does the county health department need to make the expenditure and just disperse the hand sanitizer to the fair? You know, so those kinds of things are, somebody needs to be in charge of working through that stuff. That's why I would think that the health department would be more. You know, and Shannon, to, to, Shannon oh, needs to be she was on the escort, and only sorry. because, you know, Shannon's going to be gone for a period of time, so I mean, somebody's going to have to fill that gap. And I would think the reason the person is out there because she has to step up. Mm -hmm. 
Chad is gone is what I suppose it is. That's what I would say. Yeah. Now here's something far out. <laughs> what about replacing all the faucets in the courthouse? Yeah, of course. Just... I mean, you know, you're talking about touchless faucets, you're talking about touchless flushing, you're talking about you know, touchless tins, you know, soap dispensers, mm -hmm. just so you don't have a possibility of it. And then air dryer, you know, again, air, air dryers or plates or whatever you want to talk about. I mean, all this stuff will fit that way. So, so you got all these and the school schools got all these and the cities have got these. You know, so But that would be something that the task force would I mean how they're, they're doing the, the, the task force would be, well I mean to me it is to come up with ideas because right. this is I can collect that money. Basically, all has to do with government service has to go to schools and cities and county. You know, EMS, I don't know what EMS, what else, who knows, you know, some, something for decontamination or something, you know, something along those lines that they don't have now. It's with the system. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't, you know, rural broadband. Economic broad development. Three large courthouse for broad, you know, for uh, so you can do some more things. Yes, it's a lot. 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 Yes, Yes, if they're willing to do more. Like I mean, I don't think usually they're, they're pretty much on the IT edge, but I don't know, you know, just because of all the struggles they've had for some the last few years. I don't think we had a plenty committee until we get the resolution done. You've got to get a resolution it, first. Well, there is some paperwork is coming up pretty quick. I was going to say, I don't think it'd be a bad idea this week to contact some of these people and tell them we're thinking about putting this committee together. I mean, it, I feel like it would get you a week ahead. Yes, it would be a high ground. I mean, we could ask Melissa today if she would be interested in her be willing to do that. I know we'll have to pay her, but I mean, I think that would be money for us to spend. And the resolution has to be done by the 13th of July. But you're talking 13th, 15th. But you know, instead of waiting to talk to these people oh, next week, you might as well go ahead and put the number in there and say, we can do it as well. We have to have a meeting with 15th of July. Give us your list of things that, that you want to see included. Playing a comport might be part of it, or maybe you want everybody in the room part of the time, too. I don't know. But it would be just like us down there. I mean, I can't remember all the things. It's probably not an ideal situation. Would you guys down there in the county shop do you like touchless? Yeah, we, we could go to that. And we could help it. Yeah, some of the other. Yeah, I think there needs to, to be a big group, to, and then to I think there needs to be a smaller group that can maybe disseminate all this instead of because a big group what that's hard to disseminate you know, and get a small group down initially. They can get a plan in place. So yeah, I mean, have a like yes, those schools that have been well, not at first. Okay, we got we need to get our ducks in a row. So you think of these two and one, like to set and then disseminate this information out to the other two, other two. Yeah, same way with the clerks. Trying to keep it. Because yeah. the other clerks But then we could together. expand it and it bring in. Yeah. Once we know what yeah. we're doing, expand it and bring in the schools. Once the core group of five or six of us. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. this yeah. is how, what we have planned. This is what we're going to do. Oh, what do we have on this committee? I don't know. I mean, I guess. That's what the program is called now. Uh, yeah. It just makes more sense to me to get a few people together, get it figured out, have you guys signed off on, on our plan of what we're going to do, and then present it to the schools and cities. Do we need to make a motion at a point that small deal, or just tell you guys that we'd like to start looking into that? So I do like the idea. 
Just you three, room. Uh, uh, the health department, and then Melissa, trying to get it. figured out. Um, and instead of having Sh Shannon or Emily, or both yeah, of them. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the Emily almost needs to be involved right off the bat. Because quite honestly, it's going to be both Lisa. Yeah, so she's not behind it. Yeah, mm -hmm. she both I would say both of them. It's going to be Lisa and not both. I mean, yeah. Because it's going to take both of us to do this. And we're going to have Mike look at the resolution. I'm going to, I thought he'd be here today. I will email it to him. I mean, there's nothing we can do about it. It is what it is. Yeah, sure. Um, sure. And um, I'm going to be gone Friday, but Lisa's going to sit in on that WebEx. Um, so we can kind of like I said, get, get it straight what we're going to do before we bring a big group in. Right. Yeah. There may be a place, too, for the commission kind of giving some framework of what strategy you want to see carried out in this. Like, if broadband generally wants to be, you know, kind of strategic emphasis. I guess what I'm getting at is I hope we don't just go spend money to spend money because we can, you know what I mean? Like, a bad example would be 10 years worth of personal protective equipment that is going to go bad before anybody uses it or something. You know, something stupid like that. Or just, I don't know. Oh, I'm typical. Well, or. Well, I understand what you're saying. Well, or even you know, just like the idea of touchless faucets. I mean, if it's an opportunity to improve some facilities here and we should do that, then great. But if it's just doing it because, oh, that's an eligible use of funds and there's no other good reason to do it, then. That's the stuff I've got. No, personally, I think a touchless faucet is valid. Yeah, and that's the trouble. Um, that it's going to find, I think it's going to be hard to find enough to spend. Yes. Spend this money. And I that's mean, why actually, we need to get going on it, I think. So. I think there will be if we approach it. I mean, yes. Strategic. Yeah, on by the time hand. you distribute it, I mean, I'm between the cities, it's going to be for us. And, you know, uh, it's going to take some time to yeah, work through. through. But when do you think you have, have, kind of have completed what you're going to turn in? There are some dates, and I'd have to go pull them off my email, but I mean, uh, there are some reporting dates that you have to report. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You have to turn it back in by October if you don't have it planned. I mean, if you have it, yeah. October, October yeah. you have to give it back so that they can redistribute it in round three. So we don't even have till December 31st. No to do all this. Yeah, I kind of wondered if we had to leave the Some of the accounting figures go to the end, uh, to spend the money. But yeah, you, you're going to have to decide about, you know, we're gonna, are we gonna, how much of this money we're going to use because honestly I can see a lot of it being turned back in some places just because. And that's what, yeah, especially the smaller counties that don't have the staff that, you know, some counties have a, a CFO and that's all they do is that. Yeah. And, like, uh, and Johnson County. Or a county, you can even go into Barton County. They, they, they were distributed straight but, from the fence. They already got their Andrew County. Uh, more than that. But, oh, yeah, it's not complicated. A county administrator and a specific grant writer in Barton County. We yeah. Have, you know what I mean? So, yeah, they, they do have that. So, yeah. I'll bet you you'll be pushed to get your reports done and then it'll be a long time coming. So. Well, that's the part I'm not clear on. I made it sound they're like they're they were going to actually put money they're, in They're supposed account. to send the money out. Half of it. Right. So, yes. so we should we should get four hundred and some odd thousand dollars. Then you might have to turn it back in. Yes. Yeah. So oh, yeah. I mean, you're going to have this money available. All right. Well, and if you and then if you go over, you know, but then, it, and then, then there's going to be another round. It, then you should be able to get the second half right. so of the eight hundred thousand. I think. Then the then the second phase comes in in August, I believe, and that's going to it's it's going to be geared more towards business the infrastructure. And here's the that other gives thing. you a little more incentive. It may be a different group yeah. of people that needs to be involved but, in phase two and phase three, but we ought to be all giving thought to those ones as well. Well, that's why some of the business needs to be on there. I mean, they've not been built, but then you also need a few business people that you want to be still or something. I don't know. I mean, you could have the, then you could have the Supreme Court. Yeah. Is it really going to accomplish yeah, it? Because it's going to have to be big and then it's going to have to be down to you know, get your ideas have a good get it down or mismanage them. If that makes sense. Yeah. Well, I think we have a 
I spent a lot of time on the phone already talking about yeah. this, trying to get, get ideas from what people are telling. What is this? That's what Cloud County is. The mayor of Stafford was bringing on her list already. They just started last week. They're affiliated with schools. And then ultimately, the decision how we distribute this would be a Sure. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. So they can start. Yeah, I mean, things like getting getting a quote on, for example, so one of the yeah. examples that came up to me from Marble County's grant administrator, apparently they've already applied for grants. I mean, well, we have to be so careful that we're sure we don't. Yeah. But they're yeah, saying I mean, if this can get this can fund it for sure, that might make sense. Well, some of the expense of that. Is yeah, creating really the secure links for telemedicine to occur on. You know, so it's not just an everyday know. internet connection, it's an actual secure. Change the subject a little bit. And Jane, you know, like they were routing to things, about things or equipment or to do that. Maybe it's a dedicated line. Yeah. I don't know. I don't it's know like the details, details of it, but well, yeah. having a doing price quote on it is something that's important to be prepared for. Maybe he's got a problem. Really? Randy's pretty sure he's on a list of high priority things to do. Yeah. No one else. He asked me some I asked him, so I can tell him I addressed the problem. I don't care what you get it. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, that'd be all right. It's been going on for probably six months. Um, so, do you guys know that we're not going to be supposed to tell me all the No, we couldn't. No. Oh, somehow. Good luck with that. Well, yeah. You know what? I can see that it would help in some cases with as far as old milk to getting more broadband out further is they're not going to get broadband in every household in the country but if they can get broadband to more locations further out then you can have the tower that does it to the houses so for example down in ashley's corner of the county nobody has any internet attached to their home because there's not even like a point that they can put a tower that's going to reach. So they need to have a fiber optic connection to the tower, and then the tower does the wireless signal to the houses. They need basically need to make sure they trash fiber optic connection to somewhere like Belfry or something like that to be able to broadcast to the houses and the region. So I don't know if that kind of thing can get funded. I don't think that's phase one. I'm going to take the greater out there and phase two dig a little bit of a ditch. I'm less familiar with what to do because Safford has broadband to their town, fiber optic wise, but cell phone service is abysmal over there. But I don't really know what to do about it when you've got the broadband in some ways. I don't know how to. Yeah. I 2G and the broadband. They were doing uh, one east of that. You might not cut down on that much. Connected Nation did a thing with Farm Bureau a year or two ago where they were trying to gather the data on where the why didn't, the why didn't they just gaps did they want you to So basically they gave you the ability to just to do a speed test that was connected to your GPS location. So every time I took my kids over to football practice in Stafford, I did the speed test and sent the data in and trying to help, you know, like Ammunition to ask for more investment there. Yeah. My house is surprisingly good. My house is surprisingly good. I've been just kind of feeling every time I go through the little bridge just south. Uh, Nobody in that pit works. I just find some of the ideas on this hill. I mean, it seems like the place is pretty solid. It's pretty solid. It's pretty solid. It's pretty solid. Service from Bloomingdale because we're fairly close to the tower there south of Green Market Town. Yeah, for the most part, even like we didn't have three of us telling us what's going on our internet at home at one time. And it worked. On the other hand, there were times that I had trouble just going on. I was surprised it was actually as good as it was at my approach. You didn't get to it. Mark, Tab, Okay. Sorry, Marty. No problem. Okay. So, where? 
Yeah, what is the follow up on this? Are we are we meeting or what's are we all participating uh, in this webinar on Monday, on Friday or Yeah, I think it'd be good. I guess you're not here Friday. Oh, Lisa will. Lisa will. Mm -hmm. Who's gonna talk to Lisa about? Yeah. What is she saying? What's she she's she's coming back. back. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think after that hopefully we'll have a clearer idea of what where we can go. We better do something to appoint people by next week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll have, we'll have this resolution for next week, too. I'll make sure my Yeah. Okay. Sorry. No problem. Crazy world. Yes, I do. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, a whole lot of monkey wrenches. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, well, you sent my health packets, request packets. You know. Just in case you worry about my something. We were supposed to have emailed them, and I got to thinking yesterday, last night before I left the office. I better. Take some yeah, it's probably a good idea. So, she I'm glad I did it. Well, good morning. Um, Mark Hine, the president of SDSI, for the community development of this level of organization for 18 counties. Um, and office here again, and office in the current city. Uh, first page of the packet just goes into a little bit of information about it. It's a little form in 1974. Uh, 501c3 non, uh, non profit. Uh, with the CDO again, is a community development of this building organization for 18 counties in southwest and central Kansas. Uh, we serve right now, when we put this packet together, 1,076 individuals in our system who have been determined eligible. Uh, in our service area, we don't provide the services, but we have a network of service providers that do those direct services from day to day. We complete eligibility determination for folks who come in and, and uh, want to seek eligibility. We do functional assessments, or annual functional assessments on every individual in the system. Uh, it's required as part of the Medicaid waiver. We do quality assurance reviews. We do those on about 30 to 33 percent of the individuals in this system. Uh, and we also assist KDADs in managing the wait list for the, for the entire uh, 18 counties that, that we serve. I do a little bit more information on the way later. What we use the county bill for and, and state aid is that local finance plan there. You can see the county funds that we received for this year, 2020, 528, 534. State aid is discretionary money we receive in our contract with the state of Kansas. We put that into the pot as well. And then what you can see right now below that, budget and CDO administrative revenues. That 712804 is what we receive from the state of Kansas in our contract, and we, we use 198661 We have a budget of this year to uh, supplement our contract. To be able to do what we're doing. Quite frankly, right now we're saving some money because we're not traveling. We, we, this is a, the fourth county that I've actually sat in front of. Really? And I got one county out of 18 left, Seward County. So 13 counties have been either a Zoom meeting or a conference call. Mm -hmm. but, you know, I, I'm glad to get out because I'm tired of being here. <laughs> it's nice to get out. Uh, the next page is just a, a it's a statute, section 19 from 007. Uh, Finney County actually asked any outside agency if there's a statute that applied to please provide that. So several years ago we did that and we, we just kept it in there. And again, it allows a county to either do it themselves or to contract with someone such as as a not for profit to do these services for a community development disability organization. Page three gets down to the request we have. You see all 18 counties that uh, that we serve, uh, Stafford County. We're asking this year the CDO admin, uh, 11,037 from each county. You can see that totals to 198,661. I was talking about being budgeted. Uh, and then we have a request for population. That dollar amount goes out to our providers. And in the next page, I believe, it goes into the local finance plan just a little bit more 
So the total we asked for is 31,514, which is down about 5,000 from last year. Those last two problems you can see each of the counties on the report. We requested for this year 2020 and what our 2020 contract is for what we received from these customers. And again, when, when whatever we get from the 18 counties is we, we just, you know, we deal with that. We don't, there's not going to be a budget shortfall for us. Uh, our providers, I mean, we're pretty much, we ask a certain amount, we get a certain amount, and, and that's what we do. Is, and and uh, nobody's going to go without it. That way, people will get services. And it doesn't sound like very good sales, but it's real. I mean, that's what, that's what we do. I, I know the counties right now are, are uh, in some counties, and I don't know where you all have this year evaluation, but I know oil and gas has hit some counties very hard, along with other things now. H4 has the counties, uh, and these are the number of individuals that live in that county, and then the county of origin. I'm going to tell you this, this, this information comes from the KDATS, their database, and I'm not going to vouch for the accuracy of it, okay? Um, and, and, and we put this in there because several years ago, one of the counties, how many people from our county are in the services? Well, and I can tell you, I don't feel real confident in this, but it's the best we have. So we're using it. That's what we give to the county. But you can see a staff of 10 living in the county, 10 or 11 in the county that are in services. So, and you can see it pulls down, down to 1,076 individuals, which goes back to the first country. Uh, local finance plans I talked about earlier. And again, if, or if you have questions, stop me or wait to me or whatever. I'll do my best to answer them. But, Page five has the local finance plan and how we use county funds. And you can see in 2019 what we spent was 686, 267, 573,000 of that went to buyers for transportation for a category we call transportation. Now local finance plan. What we have budgeted this year, uh, you can see is 41,309 for adult services, 557, 964 for transportation for a total of 660. You know, I talked a moment ago about the fact that this is only the fourth county I've been in front of. Uh, right prior, I believe it was the Tuesday before the governor did a stay at home order, uh, we, I decided that we're not trapped. Because my concern was us taking something out to our population. And the, the assessments we did pretty much face to face with everyone. But my concern was more us taking something to a very vulnerable population that then we need to go to 19 and have a real problem. So what we did, we went and we're still doing it, Zoom meetings to do these annual functional assessments. Um, we are able to, we have to see the individual. But right now there is an exception to that that KDAD has made that we can do a conference call, but we're doing Zoom with everybody that we can, which is almost terrible. And we had an affiliate meeting yesterday that we did a Zoom webinar, which was the first time we did that. There was seven of us, uh, uh, SDSI staff on the, as panelists on the Zoom webinar, and then we had about um, somewhere around 30, 30 more people that were attending and they watched. And of course, they had to type in questions they had because you can't, it's pretty hard to have Zoom meeting with 35, 40 people on the meeting, so we decided to do the webinar. Anyway, we're doing that right now, so we're not traveling, staff are not traveling. I'm the only one who's been out of the office recently. I've not been a great day. I've been to a couple of counties, but it saves me. That's where we've saved some money. Does it, does it work, work, work works very well. well. works very well. In fact, uh, what we probably will do is we'll stick with that for, for a lot of things because we drive in Garden City, we drive down to Bridgewood, which is a yeah, good hour, hour, 15 minutes. So Get two, two and a half hours of windshield time. If you can do Zoom meetings and take care of all that, you know, you're right there at the office, then you can get, get right back on and take care of the business that you need to and not be spending that windshield time. So, yeah, we'll, we'll probably do But we'll probably stay with that for a lot more. A few good things came out of this. Thing. Yeah, a few. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, you got to think that way. You yeah, it's think some of the positive things. We had actually been talking about doing this for years and finally. We're forced to do it, yeah. and, and we did it. And we bought the license. We 
first probably the free, which was okay, the Zoom free. But then we ended up buying the license, and, and you know, it gives us more capabilities. We did the webinar for, we did a one month subscription, we'll drop it now. And we just don't do it that often, but you can do that. You can do it for a month, do a webinar, and then we need to do it again in November, we'll do it again in November. Um, page six there has the our service providers I talked about earlier. These are folks, the agencies that, that actually perform the day-to-day -day services. The city in which they're located, that city is the, and I say it, that city they're located, so it's the city in which the corporation, the corporate headquarters, they're not just tied to that city. A lot of these will be out in the other counties uh, doing things as well. Page seven, this is the same information I provided since I've been here. I believe 2004 was the first year that, that we came out here at these five counties. Uh, the first paragraph is the only thing that has changed, and that's 1,076, the numbers, 1,076 individuals, 609 received residents from labor and home sports, 321 received case management. Role. Page 8 really applies more to Finney and, and Seward. I'll cover anything there for what we do, but it's had housing that we have in those two communities, Garden City and Liberal. Board, or the organizational chart on page nine. I have a board of directors, uh, including myself. There's nine staff total. Page 10 has the applications that we have received from individuals that dates back to 2009 through 2019. The total applied for services, the total that would be determined eligible, and then folks that would be determined ineligible, and then somewhere the, the files just closed because there's no follow through. Bottom part of that page is the wait list. The state of Kansas, when we put this together, and this was February 14, 2020, on their website, we put this together in March, I believe. 4,190 individuals in the state of Kansas were waiting for services. 316 in our 18 counties. And the oldest one in our 18 counties goes back to 2011. We had eight individuals who applied, were eligible, and applied in 2011. And then you can see each year after that what's happened until 2016. There's a map of the state of Kansas with CDOs and then board members. And I need board people. So if you know of anybody, it, it doesn't have to be, uh, you know, sometimes people think well, uh, family members of an individual with intellectual disability does not have to do that. I've got county commissioners, I've got county treasurers, uh, I've got business people, I have family members. It can be someone, we meet four times a year in Garden City. Um, serve a meal because we got people driving from all over and we meet at 6 30 and, and uh, like I said it's a quarterly meeting so it's only four times a year. We'd love to have somebody if you know of somebody put them in contact with me if you would please or and I have several counties now that it's hard to find board members. People are willing even only four meetings a year. But I think I had planned this year I'm like for instance going to these counties and finding out from the commissioners okay where, where can I go to talk to people is there civic organizations or chamber of commerce or where can I go to talk and just so it, it's out there and they know that we need a board member from your county to serve on this board. We need four times a year. I'm not, not going to, only four times. I don't want to say, you know, it's not important because it is. It's a very important function, what they do uh, and what we do, but it's not a time. I mean, the board meetings will last one to two hours. And people get there by six o'clock usually. So, you know, you're there. Two and and we, pay, we pay my lunch too. So, if you know me, but please, they have contact me or call me and I'll contact them. Talk to them about that, the specifics. Is that the one Jerry was on? Yes, Jerry. How oh, is Jerry? Jerry was good. Jerry showed up there. Yeah. He was a contributor. Yep. Cool. That's what I need. Put that on our list of things to think about. Like I said, I'd be willing to come out and talk to a yeah. civic organization or whoever to, to just to yeah. let them know who we are and what we do. Probably the best for us to refer to. Okay. 
Okay. My first thought anyway. Okay. Well, yeah, do you think you offer the support we've received through the years and individuals with intellectual developmental disabilities? I do think that what we're able to do with this money when we pass it over to our providers through that local finance plan. And by the way, that is done in the transportation, for instance. In this area, for instance, Sunfire Diversified, Rosewood, um, Pathways Race Care, if one of them has an individual and they decide they want to go, they can say Sunfire, serve them, and they want to go to Rosewood, well, the money goes with them. Each one of those organizations bills us on a monthly basis and the number of people they provide day services to and residential services to, or both, and they can pay on a monthly basis. So the money goes with them. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, man. Sorry to hold you up. Oh, that's no problem because I'm headed back to garden now. And <laughs> didn't have any place else to go. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. See ya. Have a good day. Yeah, we'll reset. Anything else right now while we're in session? Nope. Okay. We will adjourn.